Alex Cora sticking with Tristan Costas despite his offensive slump paid off for the Red Sox in their 8-3 win over the Blue Jays on Wednesday to officially clinch the series with one more game to go. You are Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked On Red Sox is brought to you by Rocket Money. Stop throwing your money away, cancel your unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB. Happy Thursday. We're almost through another week. I'm your host, Nessens Lauren Willand. Again, thank you for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen of every single day. The Red Sox now have won five in a row after that 8-3 win over the Blue Jays. And it's another series that the Red Sox have clinched. There is still one more game to go on Thursday night. And this was a team that the Red Sox struggled mightily against last year. They struggled against a lot of teams, specifically in the AL East and specifically the Toronto Blue Jays. So it's been really, really nice to see that the offense and the pitching has come together to kind of make this an exciting series for Red Sox fans. So we had Alec Manoa on the mound for the Jays on Wednesday. We had Nick Pavetta on the mound for the Red Sox. And Manoa delayed the game just ever so slightly by sauntering from the bullpen to the dugout, taking his time. And it looked like he had this whole entourage with him. He had some of his teammates with him. And I don't know if it was some sort of intimidation act regarding Alex Verdugo and how Alex Verdugo said last month, I believe it was, that he didn't like the way that Alec Manoa played the game, specifically referring to two strikeouts of Bobby Delbuck and Franchi Cordero, where he maybe over-celebrated, and I'm all for celebrating but when you're striking out people like Cordero and Dahlbeck especially last year's team maybe tone it down just a little but I do love the emotion but it was just very weird it was the 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 still pictures from it on Twitter it's just like what what in the world are you doing but if, if it was an intimidation act it didn't work out for the Blue Jays and for Manoa which was good news for Boston and some other good news for Boston is Tristan Casas he was one of the stars of the game he had a three for five night two RBIs and scored a run of his own slumping offensively of late he was 0 for 11 going into Wednesday's game batting just 180 but we do know that he has the plate patience Jake and I have talked about the plate patience that he possesses and that he can see those these pitches very very well and that he draws a lot of walks his on-base percentage is 297 so we know that the plate patience is there it's just a matter of you know connecting the bat to the ball which has that batting average down quite a bit sub 200 but listen we all know what happened with Dustin Pedroia's rookie season. Not saying that he's going to, that Costas is going to win the, the rookie of the year, but patience. He's going to be fine. He's very patient at the plate. If he can be patient at the plate, we can be patient with him. But he ended up coming in clutch. He tied the game twice for the Red Sox on two separate occasions, kept them in the game. And afterward, he said that he was very grateful for Alex Cora's support and sticking with him. And Alex Cora kind of instills his confidence in him. And Alex Cora did play alongside Dustin Pedroia in 2007 when, you know, when Dustin Pedroia broke out and won the Rookie of the Year. The, they were playing next to each other. Alex Cora could have been looked at as the guy to be like, all right, you're going to take over for Pedroia because he's just really, really, really slumping. But the Red Sox are patient with Pedroia then, and it clearly paid off. And maybe some of that is playing into Alex Cora's decision and also – are you really going to either A, send him back to AAA Worcester? Are you going to platoon him full time with Justin Turner? Who else is there to play first? Are you going to recall Bobby Delbeck? Like there's there's not a whole lot of options. And I don't hate what I'm seeing from Casas right now. Of course, I'd like to see him connect more like he did on Wednesday. But I'm not sitting here panicking over him, especially a month into the season. It's just He's young. He's a rookie. He's going to work these things out. It's just a matter of being patient. And if he slumps this season, the entire season, I mean, yes, I, I don't want that batting average to be sub 200 all season. But if he hits two, 215, 220 at the end of the season, all right, I'm not going to be mad about it because it's his first year in the big leagues. He was hurt last year. That kind of hindered that his eventual MLB debut last year. He's going to be fine. And we saw the kind of glimpse of what he can bring to this team on Wednesday, and hopefully that continues into Thursday's game. And someone else who helped contribute to the offense and has been a crazy good competitor is Mazataka Yoshida. He extended his hit streak to 13 games, and he's been really, really, really good 
for the Red Sox. He went two for five. He had two RBI. And every member of the starting nine on Wednesday had at least one hit. So that was really encouraging to see. And I think what's more encouraging as well, aside from Yoshida just continuing to be a force at the plate, is that it felt like the Red Sox were never out of this game. And it's like they weren't down five plus runs or anything. They weren't, you know, they had a very slim deficit to, to crawl back from. But it never felt like this game was over. They took advantage of errors by the Blue Jays. They were aggressive on the base path. They put the ball in play. And at one point, Nick Pavetta was called for a balk, which would not a balk, but we will talk about that in the second segment of Locked on Red Sox. And Toronto went up by one, and I was like, yuck. This this is how this game is going to end. This is how the, the series is not going to get won. This is, this is how it's going to be decided, isn't it? It's a dreary, cold, rainy night at Fenway. It's cold, it's May, and it should be kind of much warmer than it is, but that's New England weather for you. And this game is going to be decided by a Bach that wasn't even a Bach. But the offense said not so fast, and they, they did it. They turned it on. They turned on the bats. They were scoring with runners in scoring position. They are putting the ball in play, which is incredibly important. I love the home runs that we've seen, but I also love the hard contact that the batters have made with these baseballs. It's just very encouraging right now, and it's so much better then you know, I feel like I feel like much better this season at this point in the season than last year in 2022. And after all was said and done, the end result was an 8-3 win, more Yoshida offense, a slump broken by Casas, and a five-game win streak now for the Red Sox. So just a very overall, very positive and productive game. And again, you're beating AL East opponents, which we know how much the Red Sox struggled against last year. So just overall very good. I'm feeling the vibes are high right now. And that could change any minute. Baseball is very, very weird. We know that at the drop of a hat, this this team could go down south. But I right now, I don't see that happening. I think that they're feeling good. Players are really starting to find their grooves, find their legs, and just find their bat, which is incredibly important. And the pitching, it, it could be better. And I think it does need to improve, absolutely. But it could be worse. And right now, I'm feeling fine about the, uh, the, the pitching that we have going on right now, but things could be worse. And that's kind of how I'm deciding to look at it. Like I said, the, I'd love the pitching to be a little bit better, maybe more than a little bit better, a little bit more reliable, but we got a good outing from Nick Pavetta and everything just seems to be clicking right now for the Red Sox. Five game win streak going for six on Thursday. Let's keep these good vibes rolling. But the offense was not the only thing that was dealing in this game. The pitching also came out strong, as we just mentioned, and we'll talk about that in our second segment of the Locked On Red Sox podcast. But I just want to take a minute and let you know that today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com slash locked on MLB and get on your way to being your best self. Jake and I do a mental health minute. We used to do it every episode and we try to do it as many episodes as possible. And we are big proponents of mental health and therapy because that has helped us become the best version of ourselves. And BetterHelp can get you on that path right in the comfort of your own home. By nature, I'm a people pleaser and I often find myself not putting myself and my needs first. And I'm not taking the proper time to kind of find that that work-life balance or just that life balance that is needed to be a better version of me. Sometimes it's super easy to get caught up in what others need. Hey, Lauren, can I get this? Hey, Lauren, can I get that? I'm like, I got you, no problem. But I don't take the time to ask myself those same questions. And maybe you're the same way. We don't want to feel stretched thin. We don't want to feel burnt out. And I know firsthand how quickly that can happen. But thanks to therapy, I have been given the tools to kind of get a grip on this chaotic life of mine. And I'm able to give the best version of myself to others without making the sacrifices. And if you're on the fence about therapy, I completely understand. But the least you can do is give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. We all have busy schedules. We all have lives outside of our our work, our friends, everything. But BetterHelp can work around the time that you have. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and you'll be matched with an online therapist. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on MLB to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on MLB. Thank you for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen. Everydayers, do not forget to tune in tomorrow. We will be recapping Thursday's game. Again, hopefully a four-game sweep. That's what we are hoping for. And as important as the offense was on Wednesday, the pitching was also a huge 
huge factor for Boston. Nick Pavetta went six innings, gave up five hits, three earned runs, one walk, and struck out six. And I thought this was the best we'd seen of him. And Alex Cora agreed. He said after the game that this was the best he's seen him. I know that he pitched well in Tampa and in Oakland and all that stuff two years ago. But that one, as far as game planning and what we wanted to do against the tough lineup, that's one of his best outings. And he looked good. He looked in control. There was one weird moment, which we mentioned in the first segment, which had Nick Pavetta hot and understandably so. So it was on top of the fifth inning. There was a runner on third, Bo Bichette at the plate. And Pavetta was called for a walk, which allowed Toronto to take a 3-2 lead. It was bizarre because through my eyes anyway, I didn't see Pavetta do anything different with his windup than he had all night. I went back, I watched this video a hundred times. Nothing really seemed off. It just seemed like his normal everyday delivery. He wasn't happy. Obviously, he wasn't happy about it. He was trying to explain to the umpire and Pavetta was showing him you know, what he does in his windup. And it just seemed very confusing. Cora didn't really know what was going on. The umps ended up getting together and didn't really matter. They still ruled it a balk. The run stood. It was 3-2 Blue Jays, but Pavetta responded by getting out of the inning, and then the offense ended up doing his job. And Nick Pavetta said after the game that the problem that he had with the call being a balk was that it wasn't called two pitchers before, and that he'll see what happens later on. He didn't really want to go too much into it, and I think it was just at that point there was nothing you could do. The Red Sox won the game. He did his job. It was just a bizarre sequence because it was just – like I said, he didn't do anything differently. If you saw something, let me know because I, I've i done side-by-sides of uh, pitches he threw throughout the game up until that balk and then after the balk. And I'm like, the math ain't mathin'. Like something is not right here. Like this this was not a balk, but it didn't cost the Red Sox at the end of the day. And we're probably having a much different conversation if the Red Sox ended up losing three to two. But those bats did what they did and got the Red Sox the win. Pavetta did his job though. Chris Martin came in for a very strong inning of work that included two strikeouts. Cutter Crawford went an inning in the third, gave up a hit and a walk before being removed from the game with what Cora called hamstring tightness. And he did mention on Thursday that he's day-to-day that doesn't believe Crawford will go on the IL. So we'll be keeping our eye on that because this bullpen does not need any more injuries. It's already thin, and we just need the bullpen and the pitchers themselves just to be as healthy as possible. Ryan Brazier, he closed out the game, and the Red Sox sealed that 8-3 win. So good times were had by all. The light show was going crazy at Fenway. What do you think of that, by the way? Because I don't like it on TV, but I like it in person. And I don't know if it's just because it doesn't translate the way it does on TV. The Woo Sox did it last year, so I already knew what to expect in terms of like being in person at the park. But I, I enjoy it much more in person than I do on TV. But let me know what you think. I'm always curious to see when teams and the league tries new things with like pitch clock and the bigger bases and all these new rules. So let me know, but let's close out this show with the mental health minute. But before I do, I just want to take a minute to tell you about rocket money, because if you're like me, you probably have some subscriptions that you forgot about. Maybe you did one of those free trials that turned into a monthly subscription and you're like, crap, I 100% forgot about this. You're not alone. I'm not alone. A lot of people do this but using Rocket Money has ended up saving me so much money per month. It's a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions. It monitors your spending and helps you lower your bills all in one convenient place. So you don't have to sit there, go through your bills, go through your bank statements. It's all right there in the Rocket Money app. And as I mentioned, you're not alone in this. I'm not alone in this because over 80% of people have subscriptions that they have just completely forgot about. Maybe the Stars app just to watch that one show. You get that free trial of Amazon Prime. Prime. You get free trials to pretty much anything these days and all of a sudden you have a hundred subscriptions piled up. Rocket Money will quickly and easily find your subscriptions for you and for any you don't want to pay for anymore you just hit cancel. So it's as simple as that. They find your subscriptions, you look at the ones that you don't want to pay for anymore, maybe that you forgot about, you hit cancel and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. It really is that easy. And Rocket Money also helps you manage all of your finances all in one place and automatically categorizes your expenses so you can easily track your budget in real time and also get alerted if anything looks off. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money and has saved the average person up to $720 a year. Can't really say no that kind of money back in your pocket. So stop throwing your money away, cancel the unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB. That's rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB. One more time, rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB. It's been a while since we've done the mental health minute, 
But I just, obviously I was gone for the last two weeks. I was away on a vacation with my husband, his family, and then two friends of mine got married. So we ended up doing a road trip because my husband's family runs a house in the Outer Banks in North Carolina. It's right on the ocean. It's beautiful. And he's one of five. So it's great to kind of get the entire family together. And some of his family from out of state also comes. So it's just a, like a big family reunion. And it's it's just so much fun. All we do is relax. We play games. We play board games. We watch the Bruins, unfortunately, get eliminated. But then my friends got married about five hours south in North Carolina in Ocean Isle the week after. But we, my husband and I had like four days in between where we didn't really have anywhere to stay. So we're like, let's just drive down the Outer Banks. And we stayed in different areas in the Outer Banks. We saw tons of beaches, wild horses, and we watched some Bruins games. Some were good. Obviously, game seven, not good. But it was just a, a reminder for me to, you know, take your PTO, be present in the moment, and just kind of enjoy what's around you. I felt so relaxed. And then at my friend's wedding, I didn't really know many people outside of the bride and groom and maybe two other people. And that can kind of be intimidating when you're going into, you know, they've known these people their whole lives. And it was just being surrounded by very good people. It 100% can shift your mood. And every day it was just good beaches, good people, good food, good drinks. And I got a text from one of the girls today. She texted our bachelorette party group chat just saying that, you know, she, everyone lifted her up. She's going through a tough time and that she didn't realize that, you know, how strong she was and how much, you know, how much worth she has and being around all of us ha helped her realize that. And I'm certainly not going through anything that she is, but she's absolutely right where I came home just feeling like much more confident and much just happy about the, the entire vacation, happy about no matter where I'm at in life. I have a good supporting cast around me and new lifelong friends. And my husband even left with some lifelong friends as well. So just, I know that it's hard to, to take time off. I know that's hard, especially to take two weeks off. And I was very, very fortunate to do that, but it was a completely needed reset. And like I said, in, in an earlier episode this week, the Red Sox turned it on while I was gone. So maybe I helped spark this, this, kind of hot streak the Red Sox are on? Obviously not. Obviously not. But if you're a superstitious person, if you're kind of like a curses person, then maybe, maybe we can buy that. But thank you for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen of every single day. Everydayers, do not forget to tune in tomorrow or recap the season, no, the series finale, not the season finale, the series finale between the Red Sox and the Blue Jays. Knock on wood for a game sweep, but we are just going to cross our fingers for a very competitive game. Like we've seen very good baseball the last few weeks. Be sure to check out all the other shows across the Locked On Network, Locked On Blue Jays, Locked On Yankees, Locked On Astros, Locked On Pirates. They're having a great season. Ethan is probably very, very happy. Check us out on Twitter at LO underscore Red Sox. Jake, he will be back tomorrow at Jake Iggy. And then me, La 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 Lauren, three laws, Lauren with four R's. Thank you once again for making Locked on Red Sox your first listen. We can't wait to see you tomorrow. Until then, we'll end this show how we always do. Keep the faith. Let's go Red Sox.